welcome to Wednesday night Bible study here at Expedition Church of the Triad. Um, oh, glad you guys made it. Yeah, I blew right by you on the interstate. Uh, you gotta, oh, you didn't you hear somebody blowing the horn at you? That was me. Uh, I mean, I figured she would recognize the black Jeep passing right by him, you know, but apparently not. <laughs> the what? <laughs> Lord help us. Lord help us. All right. Good to see everybody. Um, let's see if there's anything else. Christmas party Saturday night, 6 o'clock, and um, et cetera. Don't forget Sunday. Is there time to return all the presents for the um, the project? What is it? Is it called Angel Tree? What's it called, guys? I keep forgetting the name mixed up. Whatever the name is, uh, Christmas presents return by Sunday, okay? Uh, you can bring them for Saturday night during the, the party. You can go ahead and bring them, put them under the tree on, on Saturday night, all right? Uh, but it's due it back on Sunday at the latest because they've got to be taken and given, and they've got to you know, make, go through and make sure everything's right before they distribute them. And we got to give them time to do that, all righty? So Saturday night, six o'clock. If you're out there, come on, join us Saturday night for our Christmas party. Hallelujah. Our first Christmas party in the building. Hallelujah. And our first Christmas party in a, in a few years. Um, you know, so obviously never, once COVID hit in 2020, we didn't do anything. I think we'd have one, maybe two at the community center during that time. So because it was spotty, it was just, it was really awkward to try to um, organize, Okay. So it won't be awkward here. It'll be fun. We've added Rita to the bunch. <laughs> Hallelujah. And uh, we love having Rita around. Rita, Rita, Rita brings food. Rita helps. Rita works. <laughs> we love having Rita. We just need to get Rita to bring some of our old friends over here. Load it up. Hallelujah. You got any more out there? They went to the wrong church. Okay, the word of the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. Open your Bibles, if you will, to the 11th chapter of the book of Hebrews. Hallelujah. The, the letter of Paul, uh, the apostle, I believe Paul. Hallelujah. Um, there's, there's reasons behind that. It's not just, you know, I believe Hebrews helps complete what, what we refer to as the Pauline revelation, all right? Um, and also, some internal evidence. Now, there are those who say that Barnabas wrote it. They, you know, they want to say Paul didn't write it because it wasn't his normal style. Well, his normal style was writing the Gentiles, okay? And, um, but this is written to the Hebrews. And historically, this letter was actually titled to the Hebrews, all right. Now, um, there is some spec. I'm just going just 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 for the sake of argument here. You know, I know we wonder, wonder who did who 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 wrote the book of Hebrews. Well, <laughs> that was a, that was a song we did at one of our at our. Some of y'all were not there, but at our um, Luau Bash years ago, we set it up, took a bunch of old songs and got them born again and filled with the Holy Ghost, and. Um, I mean, we did, you know, took Charlie Brown and turned it into Glory Cloud. Glory Cloud. Well, this is how. <laughs> anyway, um, many believe, yeah, Paul writes in um, Galatians, see how large a letter I write. Okay, or how large letters I write. And that's, people go, well, that means he had optophilia, that runny, pussy eye, the oriental eye disease. He could barely see. He's writing letters so big, they're almost like a tablet each. Da, da, da. You know, you're thinking, Boy, you really are, are, are stretching your narrative to prove that God makes people sick, <clears throat> okay? There is genuine historical speculation that this book was an addendum to Galatians and simply referred at the end of Galatians and went to the Hebrews, and then Hebrews was written, okay? So, um, and, and then, because it deals with new creation, it deals with new covenant in light of uh, the Old Testament covenant and the transition into the new. We have a new and a better covenant established upon better promises. 
okay? And so um, I believe, for, for some of those reasons, you know, that, that Paul wrote Hebrews, okay? Though it's not his normal style to a Gentile church, it wasn't written to Gentiles. It was written to Hebrews. So therefore, being a Hebrew of Hebrews, studying at the feet of Gamaliel, thank you, you knew I was looking. I was going to mutilate it. <laughs> I just paused. I gave you the chance. <laughs> Gamaliel, um, being one of the most astute and knowledge people of his day, he was more than well qualified to write this letter of any of anybody. Okay, so in Hebrews, going to the eleventh chapter of the book of Hebrews. We read a verse that we're all familiar with. Everybody uh, has, has heard this before. Uh, but I'm going to pick up verse 1, all right? Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now, I know we like to make the play on words that faith is down. You know, we like it, it preaches good. Now, you do understand it's just, it's used, it's just saying now. He's like, uh, and, 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 and for now, or, you know, it's not, it's not an adjective describing faith. Okay, although it preaches good, yeah, it preaches real good, you know, and we understand faith is now the faith is present tense. Okay, all right, uh, but now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So faith is a substance. One translation says a title deed, another says a guarantee. Hallelujah of things hoped for, of things not seen. Um, for by it, what by faith. The elders obtained a good report. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were made of things which do appear. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad that God, um, well, I'm sorry, were not made of things which do appear? They were not made, well, because it was made by faith. You don't see faith. You see the results of faith. You see faith in action, but you don't see faith per se. Now, I know the Bible says that when they, they brought him up on the man up on the roof and Jesus seeing their faith, he was seeing the action of their faith, their faith in action. He was seeing the results, uh, or we could say even the consequences of faith in action. Okay? Um, so the things that the world was framed by the Word of God, so the things which we are seeing were not made of things which do appear. It wasn't, God did not take cosmic dust and form it into the worlds, He spoke it. And created it. The creative power of his words. He created it that way. You know, um, I, I do believe in the Big Bang Theory, though. To it, not the way the world does it. The world is a bunch of cosmic gases were just kind of getting out there. They were, they were swirling and doing all this kind of stuff. And all of a sudden, there was this explosion. And threw everything out there into the universe. I'm going to tell you, people who believe that stuff got more faith than most Christians. Believe in that kind of stuff. It takes uh, some kind of faith to believe that stupidity. Anyway, no, I, you know, and but they also taught, said, science says that the universe began a single point and is expanding in every direction from that single point at the speed of light. Well, true. God said, light be, explosion. Light was. He never told it to stop. That word is still in operation, expanding the universe in every direction at the speed of light. Why? Well, he said, light be. He, he sent forth a creative word that has not ceased. Isn't that cool? Okay. And it was, it was created for something you can't see. What? His word. His faith created the universe by speaking. Amen. Call, we call it the law of Genesis. You know, and God said, and God said, and God said, and God said, we, we read Genesis. Um, by faith, Abel offered to God, unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead, yet speaketh. See, your faith will, will talk after you're gone. I, and we hear too many stories along this line. It's really interesting. Um, we shared this before the, the place where Rainbow Bible Church is right now in Tulsa. Um, the, the, I don't know if y'all know this, or not, the footprint of the building is an acre. Just to kind of give you an idea of the size of the building, of the church. The footprint of the church is an acre. That's pretty big. 
which means we could put five Rainbow Bible churches on this property. We'd be at the park, but we'd have five, we'd have five churches. Okay. Um, and, you know, the, the uh, man who owned the property, though, they, they traced it out and found family members. He used to go out there and pray right, where that, right there where that was, that God would use that property. There was a little knoll, you understand, in Tulsa, the, in Oklahoma, that area. A knoll is an anthill. Okay. Um, it is actually up on a plateau. That, that part of uh, that northeastern part of Oklahoma is on top. I drove down that we were, I was working for a PM and Oregon company when I was out there, and we went to deliver one up in Missouri, which is only you know, a couple of hours away. And we, we rode out northeast, right, good ways, up to Bartlesville, then went out and went down and turned around and looked, and there, there was a plateau. It was really, you know, the first time I ever going to see a plateau like that. It was really cool. Um, if you ever want to get on a plateau, you don't have to go far, just go over to Tennessee and ride Interstate 40. And uh, once you get out of the actual mountains of the, of the Smokies, you get on the uh, Cumberland Plateau. And so you're looking over to the valley floor. Over there, that's the, what they call the Cumberland Plateau out there. Um, but you just can't see it the way you saw, way, way, way we saw that out there in Oklahoma. That was, just, that was the coolest thing I've ever seen um, archaeologically or ge geologically. There you go. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, he, he prayed out there for, for a long time that God would use that land for the kingdom of God. And from their research, they found out that, la that little place he would pray is where the church sits. His faith continued even after he was dead. Years, years, years after he died. Decades. And then one of the other stories, you know, one of the great revivalists, um, uh, Charles Finney, um, had prayed for a man his whole life. He would go out and he would not quit every day until he went somebody to Jesus. He went somebody to the Lord every day. And there was this one man he had prayed for and 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 prayed for. He could never get him saved. He got saved at his funeral. <laughs> See, his faith was still alive. Here, Abel, he's, he, he being dead, yet his faith speaketh. It still speaketh. Amen? Glory to God. Um. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith, it is impossible to please God or to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Now, I was, I was thinking on this line and, you know, um, looking at these things. Sometimes I, I think when we look at this, said that, you know, without faith it's impossible to please God, then we, we see our actions of faith as necessary to be pleasing unto the Father, to earn His favor. Okay? Um, and, and, you know, we can almost take it into works. Does that make sense? You know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to live by faith because I want, I want to please God, so I'm going to, I'm going to use faith. But really the word here, uh, the Greek word here, um, is a derivative of another Greek word that means to agree. So let's, let's take this. The, this derivative, without faith, it's impossible to agree with God. We, see, we want to come into agreement. You know, the word... Um, Confession literally means to say the same thing as. Homologio. Homologio. To say the same thing. Homo, same as. Logio, word. To speak the same thing. Okay? To speak the same thing. So our confession is to speak the same thing. Well, how are you going to speak the same thing as God unless you're in a Agreement with God. How many have found out it's hard to walk in harmony when you're not in agreement? Okay. Now, you can agree to disagree, but you're not in harmony. You may not be contentious, but you're not in harmony. Does that make sense? Um, to agree with God. So without faith, it's impossible to agree with him. Because so you have to believe his word. And in order to make a biblical confession, you're going to have to agree with him. Amen? 
Well, I don't know, but I just believe. What you just believe don't mean anything except defeat. Because if what you believe is not in harmony with what God says, you're not in faith, and you're not in agreement, and you're not going to be able to speak the same thing as. Not in faith. See, the confession of our faith. See, I, it, it's not a biblical faith confession unless you believe it. And I've seen too many people try to say stuff simply because they were told, well, you need to say this. Don't say that. You know, well, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. See, that, 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 that is not an, an, an uh, uh, either or. That is an and. There, there is no, um, well, I'm saying, I really don't believe it, but I'm saying it. Well, that don't mean anything. Amen? Let us hold fast the profession, same Greek word, confession of our faith. Amen. So, if we are going to, we, we look here, it says, now it's without faith, it's impossible to agree with him. Well, they that come to God must believe that he is, and he's the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So, what, what we, in order to obtain answers from God, we walk according to his precepts. Now, remember in Isaiah, he said this. He said, my words are, what, higher than yours. Well, for my thoughts are higher than your thoughts, and my ways are higher than your ways. Amen? Well, we'll run over to um, uh, Isaiah 55. You can walk if you're older. Rest of you run. <clears throat> Let's just go ahead and read this chapter. Um, ho, ho, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters, that you may, and, and ye that hath no money, come ye and buy and eat. Yea, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Wherefore do ye spend money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which satisfieth not? Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. Incline your ear, and come unto me here, and your soul shall live. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. Behold, I have given him a witness to the people, a leader and a commander to the people. Behold, they shall call a nation that thou knowest not, and thou shalt call a nation that thou knowest not, and nations that knew thee, knew not thee, shall run unto thee because of the Lord thy God. And for the Holy One of Israel, for he hath glorified thee. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy unto him, and to our God he will abundantly pardon. Now look, let the wicked forsake his way. See, when you get born again and you come unto God, you need to forsake your way. Now, you get people who get saved who still go, well, I don't know. I don't care. I believe it this way. You know, well, hey, stupid. You know, well, I just believe. Well, what are you basing what you believe on? Because, see, once you get born again, the Word of God tells you to renew your mind to the Word of God, that you may prove that good, perfect, and acceptable will of God. See? See? Without mind renewal, you're unable to determine the will of God. Now, you might have always, Grandma may have said it this way. You may have had dear loved ones that believe this. You know, I had, lo I had loved ones that believed stuff that were unbiblical. And you said, well, bless your heart, I love you, but you're wrong. Well, how can you say it? Because the Bible says you're wrong. You, you didn't forsake your way. You, you, know, you grew up believing that. I mean, I remember, I, oh, dear Lord, some of y'all have heard these phrases before. You know, cleanliness is next to godliness. That's not in the Bible, by the way. Not even implied in the Bible. But, boy, I mean, it's gospel. It was, I'm telling you. I've even had people quote it to me as, as Bible verse. Well, you know, the Bible says cleanliness is next to godliness. Really? When I first got saved, I believed that. You know why I believed it? 
Because grandma had said it my whole life. And I, knew, I just knew that was in the Bible. And there was another phrase that they always used. The Lord helps those who help themselves. But it quoted. They just said what verse of Scripture it was. Okay? And I, so I went through my whole life growing up in church, you know, not saved, uh, you know. But then when I got saved, I knew these were Bible records. These were, these were scriptures. I was quoting it to somebody when somebody wouldn't know where it was. Well, we didn't have PC study Bible back then. There wasn't Bible software. So your PC study Bible was Strong's Exhaustive Concordance of the Bible. How many have one? Big enough to choke a mule. I mean, that book is big. I mean, he, he listen, Strong's was, was o OCD. I don't know how to say it. Because he took every preposition in the Bible and listed where they were. That's a little ridiculous there. You know, the, every single reference for the word the. A, every single reference for the word a. I call that a little OCD. Okay? But it was called exhaustive. Okay? Strong's exhaustive. Yeah, and then you got you got you had Dr. Young's analytical concordance of the Bible, okay, um, you know, similar time period, um, and, and and both very very good for, you know, looking looking things up back, especially back then when you didn't have Bible software. Now you got on your, now you got them on your Bible software. You don't need to look up the word a. I mean, you don't have to do that, <laughs> okay. But anyway, you can look up phrases, find phrases, um, but so. I went and got my Strong's. I spent a week. I looked up cleanliness is next to godliness. I looked up cleanliness. I looked up godliness. I looked up next. I looked up is. I looked up to. It won't end there. I must be doing something wrong. Because I know Grandma quoted this to me. Well, then I got curious and went looking for the Lord helps those who help themselves. <laughs> that took another week. That's a, I mean, you know, the, the word the has a lot of things in the Bible. And um, when I got done, I finally got, I got a revelation. They were in a different book. I found out that there was a book called the Book of First Opinions. Okay? We had people who had opinions and quoted it like Bible verse. And you couldn't have told. I couldn't tell Grandma it won't in the Bible because she knew it was. Hello? And you're like, okay. So if we're going to please God or come into agreement with God, we have to know what his word says about it. All right? And so we're to renew our mind to the Word of God. Why? Because we believe stuff that's not biblical. When you get saved, you believe stuff that's not biblical. And the only way to change that is to see what the Bible says about it. And I mean not some obscure, uh, twisted passage. I'm talking about, you know, Jesus said that, that uh, uh, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. You're going to have to find more than one uh, isolated verse to support something. Amen. You've got to find verses in context. Contextual interpretation is paramount in Bible study. Even if you're doing topical study, contextual interpretation of the context is important. Lifting something out of its place. And throwing it in with some other scriptures is dangerous. Because, you see, Judas went out and hanged himself. Go and do thou likewise. What thou doest, do quickly. So we can prove suicide is biblical by taking passages out of context and putting them together. 
Now, there was a book written a number of years ago. I won't call the author's name. But everybody on the planet wanted to use this driven book. And when you go in there, he was using paraphrases, a paraphrased version, and then taking scriptures in the paraphrased version out of their context and joining with other passages out of context and putting them together to make his point. Breaking every rule of Bible interpretation you can think of. But everybody's all, oh, yeah. Well, see, that's wrong. Number one, it doesn't have the power to renew your mind. It doesn't have the power to produce faith in you. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. A paraphrase out of context joined with another scripture out of context or partials. They were partials put together like they were one verse. You had to look into the back of the book and look down the chain to find out there was two different verses. He quoted them like they were the, a singular verse. Oh, yeah. And people just sucked this up, did Bible studies all over the country with this. <laughs> That's what I remember. <laughs> <clears throat> so, if we are going to come into agreement with God, oh, yeah, I'm over here right now. So, when you get saved, your, 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 your ways aren't His ways. Let the wicked forsake their thoughts. When you get born again, your thought processes has to be changed. Why? Because you've been trained your entire life to follow the carnal mind. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean you're this intrinsically evil, I mean, mass murdering, uh, you know, Jeffrey Dom Daimler, whatever his name was, you know, uh, freezing people in the basement, eating them and all that kind of stuff. But your mind is antichrist. It thinks in opposition to God and to his word. Amen? Spiritual. The mind is enmity against God, is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Why? Because it's carnal. God's spiritual. My words, they are spirit, they are life, Jesus said. Isn't that right? So, we have to come at this thing and begin to understand that God has a different system. And he says this, and he says, now, four, or really four here kind of goes, you know, to the because, you know, usage. My thoughts are not your thoughts, and neither are my ways your ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Well, God doesn't think carnally. God thinks spiritually. God's approach is from a spiritual position and not a carnal position. You come into this carnal, body ruled, sense knowledge controlled, and then you get born again. Well, you know, you're spiritual alive with the God, but your brain ain't been fixed. You need to check up from the neck up. Hello. Your thinking is still stinking. It, had, it didn't change. <clears throat> when you got born again, your mind didn't instantly go, oh, I think like God. No, you don't. You're probably still cussing. I'll never forget, about two weeks after I got saved, we were coming off playing a softball game, and I came off the field, and I was mad because we were, we were doing something. We got like 10 runs scored on us in an inning or something. And I threw my glove and said, what in the blank are you guys doing? Oh, I went down the bench and cried. I was going to hell. I had violated. Oh, I'm so sorry, God. I was a bad witness. I mean, I just was, I was devastated. That's the last time I did that. But, you know, I ain't been saved two weeks. You know, take some time. Are you here? I said, are you here? And, um, you know, your mind has to, has to it, it, it takes time to renew the mind. For it to put off the old man and put on the new. That's why, you know, so, uh, some preachers used to say, well, so-and-so, they got some folks saved on Sunday. 
Well, did you call them or visit with them and follow up with them? No. If they figured they got anything, they'd be here. They're babies. That's like going down to the, ba uh, the, the nursery at the hospital right after the baby's born, rolling them outside. But if they're, if, they're, if they're alive, you know, they'll get up and go find their mama. That's just stupid. All right? For as the rain cometh down in the snow from heaven and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth and maketh it to bring forth in bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me a void. Hallelujah. But it shall accomplish tohu, by the way, tohu. Um, but it shall accomplish the thing that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. <clears throat> now, all of a sudden, we've got words that have authority and power to change that are not puff and fluff words of blow wind up your skirt. They're reality. They have power. They have authority. I like, I like my, the word I've kind of started using is transformative. Now, if you want to get into the sci-fi Star Trek, Borg. The Word of God will assimilate you. It will add you to its collective. <laughs> it will take your, your biological distinctiveness and add it to our collective. And you're wired into the network. Hallelujah. So that you're hearing and thinking. You ever, oh, everybody watch Star Trek and hear the Borg? And, oh, shit. All the, noise, all the whole collective is talking all at once, you know, and that kind of stuff. All those things are going on, and they're, they're being controlled by that. God's Word will begin to rewire your brain. Amen? And, you, you know, you can rewire stuff. Now, we have, we have computer people. Belinda was a systems analyst. Bill was the mail guy. He was, early on, he was, I mean, he was like the, the, Internet mail guy, you know, and uh, then he, he became like, a, then he went to bulletin board services and then he went, you know, yeah. But I remember him being, showing us his BBS server, okay. Dick's, uh, Dick's a long lifetime to retired programmer. Somebody bless him, he wrote in COBOL. Whew. Oh my. There's a reason I chose RP32 when I was in school to write my senior project in, or my, you know, my, my graduation project. It won't COBOL. Took, huh? PL1. Okay. Yeah, I was an RPG2 guy. Um, you know, did you know programming is nothing but circuitry? You're opening and closing electronic circuits. And you, when you change a program, it changes how the circuits are open and closed. Because they're opening and closing bits, bytes, you know, opening them up, gateways. And, and it's all done on these microchips now. It used to be done on big, big boards, big boards. I had a mega memory on the computer I worked on at Lawn Manufacturing on the 360. It was from that wall to this door to the ceiling and out of here. That was one meg of memory. Isn't that crazy to think? Y'all saw, saw stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, one, one meg. Not gigabytes. One meg was that much, you know. Oh, wow. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that, this is plumb, stinking crazy. I mean, the, um, the little... The little uh, um, Ones that came out when you used a little cassette player for your first home computer had 4K. Ooh. <laughs> what, what can you do now with 16K? Uh, you can keep your CMOS chip updated. Possibly. Barely. We would write programs, and you need to change the program because you know, the logic was wrong. You had to go in and rewrite it. Well, what that did, it went in, and when it was running, it was re doing the circuits completely different than it was before. It was opening this gate instead of this one. The current was flowing through over here, not over to there. 
and completely changed the outcome. Amen? It changed the way it functioned. Now, we old programmers have heard the, the uh, horrid term, endless loop. Because you'd write a program, and somewhere in there you'd leave out the end do, or not put the proper end do in the proper place, or whatever, and your program would start running and would never stop. Because it would hit a condition that it could never get out. It would just sit there and loop and loop and loop and loop and loop. I mean, you know, a loopy loop. And you had to go back and find. And when you rewrote the program, when you found it, obviously you had to find it. And sometimes that took hours. You know, I can't, well, I don't understand this. Why is this not working? One little command, in do, wasn't in the right place. And this is the program that never ends. It just goes on and on, my friend. Somebody wrote it, not knowing what they were doing. And they'll continue running forever just because this is the program that never ends. Y'all remember lamb chops? Yeah. <laughs> so, when we take the Word of God, we reprogram the messed up stuff in our heads. And it changes the gate from carnal to spiritual. And then you begin to get different results and different outcomes because you're, you're, it's running in a completely different manner. It's functioning in a completely different manner. And God says his ways are higher than our ways. And we're to <clears throat> forsake our former thoughts. What's that mean? Well, I always believe. Bye. That's got to go. I always believe has to go. Because <clears throat> what does the Word say? Try taking your way. Now, unless I, like I said, I'm an old RPG2 programmer. That's what I was. I now write for the church at DBase 2019. <clears throat> I've gone from DBase 3 Plus all the way up to the Windows versions and through the pre-64-bit um, versions, which I hate it because I had to rewrite the entire thing when I finally gave up on running the virtual machine, Bill said, Ed, Pastor, you need to, you really need to update this. Yeah, but I got to rewrite the whole thing. And in 2019, I took three months and rewrote it. I came home every night from work, and I sat down at my desk, and I, I rewrote all of that again to a 64-bit platform. Um, and it runs good. I mean, I love it. It's, it's, it's cool. Um, but it took three months, which I didn't want to give it. So I had run it for 10 years or longer running virtual machines and running Windows 98 in a virtual machine so we could run our uh, church software. But I finally had to get, uh, acquiesce to the demands of updating. <coughs> I hope they don't go to 128-bit anytime soon. i got to change it again. Nope. Okay, good. Thank you. That's assuring. And um, uh, why was I going that way? I was trying to figure out why I was going that way with that. Upgrading, yeah, uh, writing, yeah. Uh, uh. Yeah, God's code instead of mine. <laughs> we got the God code. Not the Bible code with all the hidden, you know, Kennedy killed himself based on this, this algorithm or whatever. <clears throat> I thought, come on, people. I mean, that's just, too, you, know, it's, you know, we get, we get, we can get. Charismatics can be the flakiest people on the planet. We, all, we can be. We just get all starry out over stuff. And you wonder why people think we're crazy. I mean, I know we love God, we love the Holy Ghost and that kind of stuff, but let's be, re let's be settled. Let's be grounded. Let's be stewards of the mysteries of God. Well grounded in Bible. Okay? And... Um, but our thoughts don't line up. Oh, that's what I was going to say. I'm just going to say. Now, if I took an RPG2 program that I wrote back X number of years ago, okay? Now, it went from RPG P2 to RPG3, which was a, a quote, blend of COBOL and RPG2. That didn't work. Then they came out with the AS400. And they still have the AS400. I mean, still sells the AS400 and wrote RPG400, 
which is a rela relational database RPG. It works. You know. I can't run RPG 2 on that machine. Its thoughts are higher than those thoughts. Its ways are higher than those ways. Okay? The AS400 RPG won't recognize RPG 2. Because their, their construct is so different, they won't function. And I know this because when I went to work for long manufacturing in Tarboro when I graduated, I went to a cobalt shop, Dick. <laughs> they were writing in cobalt. <laughs> I quit. <laughs> so <clears throat> the, uh, one, of the, um, one of the lead guys... He wasn't, he, wasn't, he wasn't the peon programmer. He was, you know, one of the lead guys. Um, wanted a quick program written. And I, he said, look, we, look, let's do it in RPG. You know RPG. Well, there was an RPG on the 360. RPG 1. RPG 1 and RPG 2 were like God and man. <laughs> RPG 2's ways were higher. This quick one day, you know, half day program never worked because it was so different than RPG 2. And the compiler and the, you know, things on the 360 didn't recognize the way I wanted to do things that were RPG 2 ways. It wouldn't work. So we finally tried, we finally gave it up. Just gave up on it, quit. Actually, I got born again, saved, filled with the Holy Ghost, called to the ministry, quit, and left, went and started getting ready to go to Bible school. Thank God I got delivered from RPG. He, I mean, from COBOL. He delivered me from COBOL. <laughs> and that's what happens when you get born again. And you start renewing your mind to the Word of God. You see, your old ways won't work in the new life. You've upgraded your spirit from dead and separated from God to alive and, and, and alive and union with God. And so the ways you the construct of your thoughts and actions over here in the carnal life don't work in the new spirit life. So you, uh, you have to renew your mind, okay? In other words, you've got to download the new software. And listen, and not only do you download it, you've got to learn how to write in it. Because it's different than the old way. See, the old way, you said whatever came up, came out, and it was okay. The new way is, put a watch over my mouth that I might not sin against thee. Amen? Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be wholly acceptable and pleasing unto thee, O Lord my God. The old way was, said whatever you thought, and it was okay. You don't like it? Oh, well. Hello? And we said... I saw somebody, you know, high school friend on Facebook day for yesterday. Uh, TikTok's going to be the death of me. Well, we, we've grown, we grew up thinking like that, talking like that, never thought twice about it. Then you get born again, the power of life and death is in the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Well, I didn't, yeah, but you keep speaking it. And notice that the catchphrases and terminology of the carnal mind always deal with death. I laughed so hard I thought I'd die. That about tickled me to death. TikTok's going to be the death of me. Think about it. How much of our of our catchphrases and our terminology and our jesting is about death and we don't think twice now if somebody comes along and says i want to tell you one thing i laughed so hard that i thought i'd live forever <laughs> he's one of them yeah that tickled me to life Come on now. The joy of the Lord is my strength. They say it's tickled unto death. It tickled me to life. It was strength to me. Amen? But you should go out there and tell somebody that tickled me to life and look at the, watch the reaction. 
children. Come over here. Get over here. It's nice seeing you. Because it's so contrary to what? The old ways. And we're to forsake the old ways. Why? Because without faith, it's impossible to agree with God. And our confession is to say the same thing as God. When people start saying the same thing as God, Christians will get mad at you. They'll get furious with you. Well, I'm the healed of the Lord. Like a pit bull on a bone. Come on now. I'm blessed coming in and blessed going out. Well, I'm going to tell you one thing, buddy. God makes some folk poor to work out compassion and rich people. Really? Could you, could you quote verse for that, please? Because I can quote verse that God wants to, to prosper and bless me. Can you quote verse that tells me that he's going to use my poverty to work out compassion and rich people? Or that the devil is God's dog sent to sick among you? Hello? To teach you lessons? We have, we've had local pastors on television say stuff like that. Big churches. And people going, amen. Amen. I ain't going to amen that. We all think amen just be, you know, just kind of means, you know, that's that's good. No, it means so be it. You know? It's, it's the Bible version of, let the name of Moses be stricken from the land. So let it be written. So let it be done. <laughs> Y'all have seen the Ten Commandments? You know, boom. The name of Moses shall not be mentioned. So let it be written. So let it be done. Boom. Long scene. Yul Brenner's loving every second of it. Okay? So his word will accomplish the thing he sent it to do. What's, why is the word so important? Well, he, Romans 10, 17 says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. So we have to forsake our thinking, take up God's thinking, and it will produce faith in us. Well, <clears throat> remember that faith, without faith, we can't agree with God. Well, how many want to walk in agreement with God? I do. I said, I do. Faith comes by hearing his word. If we look at this, it's important for us to hear what God's word has to say so we can come in agreement with God. Too many Christians are living in disagreement with God because they never took time to reprogram their mind, to download the new software and learn how to write in it, how to operate it, how to use it. Now, when I spent that three months rewriting the church system, the thing that gave me an absolute hissy fit, and I went to Dick and said, Dick, here's, I'm having this problem. And he said something, well, have you thought about this? And, and I went back and looked into that, and that got me on the right track. It, got me, it had to do with SQLs. Because D-Base used to operate what they called, um, uh, you, you open up work, work areas. You know, select one, you would, you would open up a thing, you would open up, select two, and you would set the key between the two this way. D, Visual D-Base changed that whole construct and didn't do it that way anymore. The new, D, the new 2019 went to an SQL. And so the pointers weren't working right. I couldn't get the pointers to work right. They, it took me a month of the three months to fix that one thing. I didn't understand. I couldn't, I couldn't figure it out. And when he, we, I started talking to him about it, he pointed me in the right direction, and that's where I stumbled into the right way. It's like, oh, thank God. Because I'd open up, you know, um, you know, key files, and it would, every record would say miscellaneous cash, because that was the first record in the name file. And I couldn't get it to go to the ID number that it was keyed to. It wouldn't, it wouldn't move with it. Because it was supposed to, I was supposed to put in your ID number, and it pull it, go over to the name file and match that and put that into the display saying, okay, this is um, the Schubert's giving this offering. 
it wouldn't do it. It miscellaneous cash was giving it. Well, I can't do that. The whole church would give a, all the money to miscellaneous cash that year. That won't going to work. Hello? And boy, we had us a Holy Ghost hoedown when it worked. It moved. It moved. It moved. Woo! And I'm going to tell you, faith is like that. When you begin to get a hold of it, you begin to see it, and your words begin to produce results. I mean, it's a whole new world, glory to God. You start going, whoa, it worked. Hallelujah. And then you can begin to continue to pursue that path. Now, if some of you going out going, this sermon did not make a bit of sense to me. Well, just go along with me, okay? Try to envision. All my programmers got it. Okay, I'm, and I'm sure you could, you could see what I'm talking about, can't you? Okay, Dennis gave me the blank artsy stare. <laughs> you know, usually our artsy, artsy, arts people don't get program people as far as logic because, because they're, they're different. They're, their brain is, just goes different. But you still got to reprogram the arts mind with the Word of God because God's artsy. How do you know? Have you seen his creation? Hello? I mean, you look at the, the things he's created. He might be more artsy than he is programmer. <laughs> Amen. But it still operates on a very logical system. I mean, everything is time. So everything is time. But in that, so he's, God's multitasking all the time. Hallelujah. Just trying to bring you in there and make you feel good. Yeah. See, a lot of people think they know the answer because they've always thought they knew the answer. And just because you think you know the answer doesn't mean you know the answer. Isn't that right? Knowing the answer comes from knowing the Word, walking in harmony with God. Being able to receive healing comes from you knowing God, being in agreement with God, not because somebody else got healed. I believe in healing because I know somebody else got healed. Well, I know people who went to hell. Does that mean I don't believe in salvation? Hello? No, we, we get that with stupid, even stupider doctrines like um, Calvinism. I mean, let's face it. I mean, you know, extreme Calvinism is, is crazy. God controls everything. He makes people prostitutes so he can, you know, save them. You know, he made a murderer so that he can show mercy. I mean, you know, I mean, cra crazy stuff. You, you get saved because he makes you get saved, not because you want to. And if, you, if he doesn't want you to get saved, you can't get saved. But he said, whosoever will but believe. Well, he was hold the ability to believe. Well, why would he do that if he came that whosoever believes would not perish but have everlasting life? See, it don't, it don't make any sense. Okay? So that extreme side of that, that sovereignty, that sovereignty is just off, off rails. So as we renew our mind and we come into agreement with him, it begins to work for us. And the more we do it, the better it works. And the more it works and the more we, under, the more we understand what we're doing. And it's like anything we do that as we learn, we add more to it. And it grows. And it grows in understanding. Now, I remember my first program I ever wrote, I didn't write it. I copied it. Because the teacher went in there and put about an eight-line program up on the board. Something like that, you know. I think there's a few parameters of the backslashes and all that stuff to get it. In. But after that, like an eight-line program, all it did was it printed a line. And then what they did that for? To show you it actually does work. Now, when I left school, I was doing more than copying an eight-line program. But they proved to us right out. Because what would happen? Somebody would go in there, this stuff don't work. I just show you, look, the first thing you did, it worked. You copied my work. You opened it up. You printed the line. So, you, you know, you were able to communicate with the computer. And it put output at, over on the, the, green, the, the uh, green bar. It worked. So it's not the computer don't work. It's you don't know what you're doing. We know people get saved. We know people get healed. We know people get baptized with the Holy Ghost. Why? Well, that healing ain't for me. That's healing stuff ain't real. But you've seen people healed. Well, I just can't get it. There's the problem. You don't understand how to 
ap appropriate what's been made available. Now, let's learn how to do that. Let's go to the Word of God. Let the Word of God renew our mind. Let us be able to come into agreement with God through studying His Word and letting His Word renew, reprogram, rewire our thinking so that they become His thoughts. Remember? Now, Romans says this. I believe it's Romans. Um, um, I hath not seen, ear hath not heard, that which the Lord has prepared for them that love him. You know what God says about all that? But. God, we have the mind of Christ. Ooh. Our carnal mind can't understand. But God hath revealed to us the Spirit, for God's Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. And you know, the Bible also tells us we have the mind of Christ. When we renew our mind with the Word of God, the mind of Christ comes in, and all those things that God hath are hidden to us are now revealed to us. Hello? They're revealed to us so that we can walk in the light of them. And as we walk in the light of them, we enjoy the benefits of them. So you don't have to quit and throw up your hands and say, it won't work for me. It will work for you. It will work for you because God's word is true. And God's word is real. And you're just going to have to forsake your old ways and take up his. Amen? Let's receive our offering. We got, we got things to do. Praise the Lord. I hope you all enjoyed that. <clears throat> now you probably all going to go home and think, boy, the Baileys, Dick, Pastor, they're really smart. There's programming guys. They really know something. Now I'll find envelope. I'll see back. Yes, yes, I still have not gotten to the printers. We will get there. There's still some out there, aren't there? There's still a few out there. <laughs> then we still have some. We're hanging in there. All right. Father, bless the people as they give in Jesus' name. Thank you. Heaven's windows are open unto them, and you cause the blessings of God to overflow them now. Amen and amen. Go ahead and receive that. Um, and as he's doing that, um, just a reminder, if you're out there watching, you, you know, you're local, you... Um, or if you're, you know, you come to church here, and you're, you're, don't forget Saturday night's Christmas party for the church. Uh, but uh, come on out, join us. We'd love to meet you and greet you and uh, find out who you are. And uh, here over at Expedition Church, 6302 Walter Wright Road um, in Pleasant Garden. That's right across the street from Colonial Materials, the, the sheetrock material places across the street where all these people come in here and get their truckloads of sheetrock and sheetrock materials right here at Colonial Materials across the street. Um, so a lot of people know where that is. We're right, we're right, across, right across the street. <clears throat> All right. Um, so until we meet again, God bless you. Remember these words, 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. We love you. God bless you. See you next time here, Expedition Church of the Triad. Amen.